Hey guys, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, we're going to be germinating some pepper seeds in rock wool cubes to be grown in our hydroponic ball jars. In a previous video, I showed you how I turned a wide mouth ball jar into this. Uh, it's basically a painted ball jar with a custom lid and some net pots that fit inside. And we're gonna start growing those plants today. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave a link down in the description below or you can maybe click somewhere over here. But definitely check it out if you're interested in a fun winter gardening project. So we are naturally going to be growing peppers in our hydroponic ball jars. Uh, and it took me a long time to decide what pepper plants I wanted to grow. And the reason is we are going to be crossbreeding the peppers that are grown in these ball jars. So I had to choose two varieties that were within the same species and that had characteristics that I kind of want to cross. This will be our first time crossbreeding peppers. I'm really, really excited about it, if you can't tell. We have a whole box of seeds. We've ordered seeds already from uh, a number of different suppliers. We have a bunch of seeds from fataliseeds.net. Really excited to grow these. A lot of Bacatum varieties uh, we got from them. We have a few seeds from Forgotten Heirlooms. We're actually gonna be using some of their seeds for one of these plants. Uh, we got some from Bo Botanical Interests, which is a pretty cool website. They don't have a huge variety, but they have really cool seed packaging with detailed information about growing. Bohica Pepper Hut is another supplier. We have about three or four varieties from them. And we have some from Chili Pepper Institute. This is the New Mexico State University uh, Institute responsible for some really cool crossbreeds. So. A lot of seeds to choose from, so you can see why I had a little bit of a tough time narrowing it down. But without any further ado, let me tell you what we're going to be growing and crossbreeding. Number one is the Zupai pepper, also known as the Sharpay pepper. Uh, the reason it's called that is it looks kind of like a Sharpay, the dog. It has really accentuated wrinkles. So a really cool look to it. What's also interesting is it's a Chinens variety, but it has mild heat. So it has typical Chinens flavor, I assume, and it has low heat. The other pepper we're gonna be crossbreeding is the Naga Brains Yellow. We grew this pepper last growing season and it was just so prolific and it was beautiful and really, really tasty, wonderful aroma. And I think it would just make a really nice compliment. If we could get a pepper that looks kind of cool like this, but has a little more heat and maybe is yellow, I don't know, who knows what's actually going to happen, but that's the idea here. It's just gonna be a lot of fun, regardless of how it actually turns out. So, so these are the seeds we're gonna be planting today, and let's get started with that. So since we're growing in net pots, we're gonna be using rock wool. Uh, this material, although it is technically a natural material, it can be irritating, so be careful. You don't really wanna breathe in the dust that comes off of this. You don't wanna really be touching it all that much. So you could wear gloves, you could wear a mask if you wanna be very protective. Um, so just keep that in mind. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get these moistened. So I'm just gonna use some normal drinking water. I tested the pH of this just for the heck of it and it came in around six and a half and that's totally fine. For seed starting, you don't really need to worry about that. Uh, we'll get to proper pH testing and adjusting once we're actually in the growing containers. But for seed starting, you don't really have to worry about it. You can probably just use your tap water. So we'll just gently pour water over these until they are nice and saturated. See, it just sucks up all the water. That's one of the reasons that rock wool is such a great material for germination. It's also very porous and it allows the root systems to develop well. So there we go. These are nice and saturated. If you pick them up, you'll feel that they're very heavy. Uh, just make sure that they're completely saturated. You don't need to squeeze them out or anything like that. And next, we're going to plant the seeds. Um, I have plenty of seeds for both varieties here, so I'm gonna plant three or four per rock wool cube. Um, if you have a limited supply, you might want to start with just one or two seeds and hope that they germinate. But since I have enough, I'm just going to go ahead and plant. Why not do four per hole? So I know that on this side, I have the Zupai or the Sharpay pepper. I'll, I'll label this after with some masking tape as well. And we'll just kind of pinch it off a little bit. So now I wrote out a couple of labels just to keep track of which one is which, although it doesn't really matter all that much in this instance. Once the, pe the peppers actually grow, I'm gonna be crossbreeding both ways. So it doesn't really matter, but I like to know which is which. So with our seeds sown, I'm just gonna dump out the excess water. I'm gonna cover this 
uh, gently with the lid. This is just a Tupperware. Uh, you can use any container that will fit your, your two Rockwell cubes. And now I'm gonna go and set this on my seed heating mat. That's basically a heating mat for your seedlings. It makes a huge difference in germination rates. Uh, we get close to 100% germination, uh, and that's because we can keep the temperature around 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. For most pepper varieties, you want it between 80 and 90 degrees. Temperature is one of the most important factors for getting good germination rates. So let me show you that, uh, and then we just play the waiting game. Okay, so it's been exactly 13 days and both of our plants have begun to sprout. One of them sprouted much earlier than the other. I think this Sharpe pepper sprouted in about six days, but the yellow Naga pepper is taking its time. It's just starting to come above the surface. So now I'll mix our nutrients and put them into the jars. Then we can transfer the plants into the net pots and turn on the pump. So we're starting with MaxiGrow from General Hydroponics. This is a granulated formula that you just mix with water. Uh, it's a lot simpler and We'll see how it works, but essentially we need about one teaspoon for a half a gallon of water. This is just about a half a gallon. It should fill these up uh, just perfectly. So I'm gonna start by adding just about a teaspoon here and mixing thoroughly. So I'm using room temperature water. I wanna make sure that everything gets nice and well dissolved before I start measuring pH. And since we're using a pump, those bubbles will continue to sort of churn the water and uh, help dissolve any undissolved bits. So at this point, I'm going to use a pH meter to measure the pH of this water and then use pH up or pH down to achieve just under seven. Um, I've read a lot of different accounts on what pH peppers really like, but I think slightly acidic, but not too acidic is kind of ideal. So, so we recently upgraded to an Apera Instruments pH meter. This was about $50, which is expensive, but it doesn't need calibration as often and it, it will last a lot longer than those cheap units you can get on Amazon for 12 bucks. Uh, we just decided, you know, this will be better for us since we're gonna be doing hydroponics and we can use it for our hot sauces and things like that. So if you're interested, we'll leave a link down below, but for now. So currently we are very acidic. We're at a 4.9 pH. So we're gonna add pH up and we're gonna to try to bring that to just under seven. So pH up will bring the acidity down. Let's we'll start with just a little bit. They really recommend you use, you just go little by little, mix thoroughly. The reason pH is so important is if pH is out of whack, your plants aren't going to be able to uptake and use the nutrients, so they really need to be within the right range. So it's important to check regularly on your pH, make sure it's in the right range, and if it's not, use your pH up or down to bring it back into the right range. That brought us up to 5.6. Let's do a few more drops. Add your nutrients first and then balance for pH because this water before we put the nutrients in was right around seven pH. We added the nutrients and that brought it down all the way down to around five. So nutrients and then pH balancing. Okay, so finally we've reached an acceptable pH level, 6.6, .6, that should be fine. Okay, so that's it for our nutrients. They're ready to go. They are pH balanced and they are nutrient rich. Now we're gonna transfer them to our ball jars. And I'm gonna fill each jar just to the point where it's just reaching the bottom of the net pots. The roots should then start to reach into the nutrients and start gathering nutrients as they continue to grow. Hey, now all that's left to do is add our plants to their net pots, their new homes. And I've labeled the bottom here. So this one is our yellow naga. And over here is our zupai or sharpe. They should fit nicely right down to the bottom. This one as well. And with this plant, we did get more sprouts than we wanted. So I'm just gonna prune some of them away, leaving the healthiest looking plant to continue.
So now I'll get these positioned under strong grow lights and turn on the pump, leaving this running 24 hours a day. It'll deliver air through the air stones and the roots will start to drink up the nutrients. Let's check back in a couple of weeks and see how these are doing. Okay, so here we are two months later. So it's been a little longer than I was anticipating, but the plants are now fully grown and they're beginning to produce flowers. I had a bit of a hang up. I was having difficulty keeping pH in the right zone. Um, these nutrients tend to fluctuate pH pretty wildly. I was having to use the pH up and down solutions pretty regularly to keep them just around that six and a half, seven mark. But once I started doing that, the plants kind of exploded. And as you can see, they're very different looking. This is the Zupai pepper plant and it is full of huge flowers. And this over here is the yellow Naga. It's a little bit more squat and bushy whereas this one is tall and kind of thinner. The root systems of these plants are completely filling these jars. So once that happened, the plants switched over to fruiting mode and stopped growing larger. And I'm glad they did because they're starting to take up a lot of room in the grow tent. One other thing I think is worth noting is that this plant over here has pretty severe plant edema. Edema is an environmental issue. It's basically a water retention problem. You'll see a sort of crystallized look on the surfaces of your leaves if they have edema. It's not a disease, it's not spreadable, it won't transfer from one plant to the other, but it can inhibit growth, it can cause issues, and you basically need to improve air circulation, airflow, and ventilation in your environment. But as you can see, one variety can be severely affected, the other can be unaffected entirely, so I'm gonna try to keep the airflow going for this plant over here. The plant with edema also has been drinking a lot more water, so I think that the plant is having difficulty using the water effectively. Um, either that or it's just using all the water to produce all of these huge blooms, but uh, either way, this one is, is running out of water every couple of days, whereas this one stays full for much longer, so just something else to note. So in the next video, I'm going to be crossbreeding these two peppers. I'm gonna show you my technique. So hopefully we'll get a cross both ways and we'll have some new seeds to plant in the coming grow season and we'll have new pepper varieties coming your way. So I'm really excited to get started on that. I hope you'll stick around and subscribe to our channel to see that when it comes. But thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.